Hey, what's good everybody, it's CJ Beats. We're back at it again today. Today we're going to uh, show you how you can create your own drum kits in Logic Pro X. It's definitely a really nice way to, um, you know, get to your sounds easily and not have to like, you know, look around for sounds and stuff like that. You can have everything like just at your disposal right away. So um, I already have a new uh, project started and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new software instrument. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, <clears throat> once that track selected over here go to our instrument and here you could choose from different instruments as you know if you're familiar with logic um, that should be pretty simple you're gonna come down to uh, this thing called drum machine designer and um, <clears throat> this will allow us to import samples I've had previous tutorials where I showed you how to use um, ultra beat and ESX 24 uh, in logic to import your samples but um, this actually just came out in the release 10.3.2, I believe. So, you know, this is just a new way of, uh, of creating your own drum kit. So this is definitely, a, you know, a better way uh, and a better sounding way for you to, you know, get your drums into Logic. Um, so anyway, I just opened up the, um, uh, the drum machine designer. And uh, right off the bat, if you could tell here, it's got a whole bunch of, like, uh, you know, uh, effects. Um, what I suggest you do is, um, since we're going to import our own samples, is clear everything. So if you come to the uh, gray area here and right click and you go to uh, clear all cells, it's going to clear them. At, at first, I mean, for me, this is what happens to mine uh, anyway. You don't see them all like disappear. So all you got to do is close out of it and then reopen it. And then there you go. Like you got all of these fields now that you can. Uh, import your drum samples into and then it's as easy as uh, you know browsing your computer using the uh, the browser function in logic and navigating to those uh, those drum sounds and uh, as I do in all my tutorials I'll give you guys um, this drum pack that I'm going to be creating I'm going to use a uh, what is it called a nav mini kit so um, yeah we're just going to design our uh, drum kit uh, using this particular kit and then I'll show you how to save it this way you know you can always go back to it which is a really dope thing and uh, use it in different productions alright so um, let's start off with the kicks I'm gonna open up the kick folder here and um, as you can see here there's a little indicator what uh, this is on your keyboard so C1 on my keyboard is right here see if when I hold it down or press it um, it lights up and then D1 now here's a thing that becomes a little crazy let's say if we want to use all the white keys right for all the drum sounds and I don't know the black keys for um, for hi-hats and percussion and whatnot um, you have to be careful where you place these I've made the mistake of just randomly placing them and not being able to find them on the keyboard afterwards so uh, just a heads up on that but yeah so let's uh, start with C1 I'm going to import this by just clicking and dragging the sound directly into uh, that field all right, right off the bat, as you can tell here, um, you have different types of uh, you know different types of knobs that you can mess around with: pitch, attack, volume, fine pitch, decay, pan. You got your reverb, you got a crusher, some uh, drive, spread. So there's a lot of stuff you can you know mess around with. You got your EQ, your high cut and low cut filters. So definitely, definitely a nice way to like you know mix your drums correctly. Um, and these can be changed, you know, within any project that you have. Um, especially, you know, when you're talking about like <clears throat> using the same kick, but like in different beats. Sometimes you need to pitch the uh, the kick up or down. Same with the snare. You know, depending on you, you want that sound to to fit in right. And um, these tools definitely allow you to do that. All right. So um, what I didn't do beforehand was actually disable all of these other main f um, effects that come. Uh, that come turned on as soon as you open up the uh, drum machine designer so you want to go ahead and just turn all these off makes it easier all right and uh, now we can go ahead and work on this kick so I'm gonna hit on it and you can tell like it's you know it's an overdrive right now it's over 6.5 so we wanna we wanna lower the volume on this kick here all right that sounds better let's test that you know you want a clean mix so be careful and watch you know if it's coming in too hot you gotta you gotta turn that down you could always make things louder later louder later all right all right that's much better you got a negative point three I'm gonna bring this down just a couple let's leave some headroom 
all right um, yeah so that's that part let's see we could you know just keep importing other things here uh, so I went to C2 and then I'm sorry C1 and then D1 so D1 on my keyboard is the next white key right and again that needs to come down to let's see here that's good um, now we want to go into the third Y key which is E1 and if you press it like nothing's lighting up here right only down here if you could tell there's three different sections we're on the first one right now let's move over one Ah, okay so E1 is here now we can want uh, drop that kick three onto E1 uh, so that's what I mean by like you know trying to be careful where you're placing these so that you know you remember like where the kicks are on your keyboard where the snares are etc all right um so we got three kicks in there now let's keep going i'm gonna um see what's next here so f1 is next and f1 is actually back on this uh field so we're gonna go ahead and put in number four here bring that volume down let's see if we can bring that a little up all right now let's uh, let's continue. We got uh, G1 maybe. Yeah, G1's right here. So we could put number five right here. All right. Then um, then we can use uh, A1 for number six. And that's basically all the kicks in this uh, in this kit. So you see what I'm saying? Like you can you know place them in the in the right spots so that you can easily find your sounds alright so let's continue let's maybe uh, work with C2 so C2 as you see is lighting up on the next page so now we can maybe put in some um, oh, I lost the kit let's see here where's my nav mini kit there it is alright so we're gonna work on let's do claps and snares maybe start with some claps so C2 is right here I'm going to bring that volume down. All right, so now let's uh, look for D2. It's right here. So I'm going to do D2, clap number two. And um, we're going to work on, like, I'll show you in a second, like, you know, what you could do with these, uh, these other knobs and shit like that. All right. So that's a clap number two. And now we're going to go to E2, drop number three on here. It's a little inconvenient, though. Um, I, I got to say to, you know, have to switch between pages to, I wish there was an easier way to, like, you know, maybe just align them in a different way. But what, whatever, doesn't matter. All right, let's see here. So E2, E2, bring that volume down. And uh, let's see what we else, what, what, what else we got. We got F2. All right, so I'm going to put the fourth clap on here. All right, and uh, maybe we can uh, go to C3 now and uh, drop in some snares here. Just first snare. And let's look at uh, D3 right here. I'm just going to drop D3. And let's go to E3 right here. I'm just going to put number three up here. All right, cool. Now we can look at uh, F3. Click number four on there. All right, so now we got we have kicks, we have claps, and we have snares. All right, so yeah, that's basically uh, it for in importing sounds. Let's maybe look into what we can do with these other knobs here. So we got the high cut and the low cut filter. Um, basically what this is, you've seen me work with the EQ uh, in other tutorials, I'm sure. Uh, all this does basically is uh, cut out frequencies. So in drums especially, you know, it's, it's tough to find, you know, fitting drums sometimes. So it's cutting out some frequencies to leave room for other frequencies is definitely a great idea. Uh, so as you can see here, if I move this knob, the um, the EQ 
uh, high, the, the high cut filter uh, gets enabled. So the, the more I press it down, the lower it goes. And uh, if I were to come to the snare here, you can hear, let me find it here again. There it is. Uh, you can hear that, you know, this sounds like a, I guess a OVO 40, like a 40 snare, like from the good old Drake days and shit. Um, and you know, you could also cut out the, the high cut filter. Let me uh, just bring that EQ up. Um, the low cut filter, my bad. And see what I'm saying? Like cut out all the low low end frequencies. You could uh, you know use both. Really cut into that that signal. And uh, yeah, that's dope for percussion and whatnot. Um, let's see, let me leave a little room and let's check out this spread here. If I'm not mistaken, this is where is this thing from? Uh, the spread is. Let me just turn the uh, these guys off so we can hear. This basically pulls the signal left and right. You know, it just like expands its stereo spread. See how it becomes wider? And then it comes, goes more mono. It's like, you know, the mix between mono and stereo, basically. Um, all right, let's check out this reverb. Maybe we could bring the pitch down. That's cool. Um, there's a crusher here. You could do definitely do some dope stuff with that and the drive. It's like a distortion, I guess. Yeah, so definitely some some really nice stuff. And um, I'm assuming too, like I haven't tried this yet, but you guys give it a try. And let me know in the comments. Um, I think you could actually change these up to whatever, and then you know mess around with uh, with them. I don't want to make this tutorial this long. It's 12, 13 minutes in already. So so let's go uh, into saving this uh, this entire kit now. Um, all you have to do is once this drums uh, or this track is selected or the, uh, the kit is selected, go to save. This will pop up. I'll call this uh, nav mini kit. Hit save. Now if you ever want to get back to it, um, so let's say you're going to open up a new software instrument. You want to import that same one by default you'll have all these options you're gonna to go to user patches and then nav mini kit and this way it'll uh, pop up what you saved all right I hope you guys enjoyed this video I definitely enjoyed making it I hope you learned something today if you did you know make sure to share like subscribe all those good things my name is CJ beats and I'm out for now peace